Hello fearless gamers and welcome back to the second video in our Joy of Painting Minis Cypher. So for just a quick recap of what we did in the last episode is we painted the um, parts of the armor that we wanted to stay, um, that we base coated the model, then I painted all of the armor black as well as parts of the mini that I wish to stay black after the fact because I don't really like this off color black. I then went and washed all of the armor in a beel tan green to kind of give it this super dark green look like a dark green that's borderline black. And we're now going to continue on with the remainder of the project using the following paints that will be appearing on your screen. And you can check the video description about them at any time on any video for a full list of paints that were used in this um, project. And so let me just set up my timer here that I forgot to do. And we are now going to dive right in and continue painting. And so what we're going to go off next is the robes on Cypher because I want to get those painted up. That way I can start putting him together a little better and make it a little easier for doing shading and highlighting because that's how I like to do things. Um, now I'm going to be first using um, Zand... Zandri Dust as a base for the um, robes because that's what I use on all my Dark Angels and Cypher is a Dark Angel so he would have fairly similar colors and what I tend to do with this is I'm going to take this paint and I'm going to take my detail brush which where are you there you are um, mainly for the um, getting really close to the um, other pieces of detail that I don't want to be um, Zondri, um, painted Zondri dust, but might have to cut really close to it. And so I'm going to take a little bit of my paint, then I'm going to use my paint pot of cleaning water to thin it out a bit, and then we're going to get started. So here we go. And again, like I said, I apologize if there's if there's moments of like dead silence because sometimes when I'm really focusing, I just get kind of quiet. And I do apologize if my hand gets in the way at any time. Um, I'm working, or my face, because sometimes I do do that. Um, working on a little bit of a better setup. This is, you could say, the first episode of this is going to be part uh, tutorial. for. Uh, I'm going to be a tutorial piece for you guys and entertainment purposes, hopefully, if you find my commentary colorful enough and entertaining and learning process for me so I can start learning how I can do things better, camera angles, improve um, what I could use to improve my paint um, experience that way, you know, like like I'm thinking of putting up a magnify, uh, magnifying glass here so I don't have to lean really close to the model to see what I'm doing and that way you don't see my the side of my head in the middle of the shot. Maybe figure out um, a better angle to um, paint in, and in case anyone is watch wondering, um, you may hear some babbling every so often. That is my computer, which is right now playing um, Star Trek Deep Space Nine, or Star Trek, correction for all the Trekkies out there who may be watching. I'm more of a Star Wars fan than a Star Trek fan, so that's where, so the pronunciations kind of slip me, slip my mind a bit. Um, I like to listen to something while I'm painting because it helps keep my mind, I guess, like pseudo focused. Because for some reason, I get my, I'll get really bored just listening to the sound of my breathing and my brush clanging against the pot while I clean it. And so now going off, one of the things um that I'll discuss here for this one is is. What do I think about Cypher's um, affiliation? I see Cypher as a villain because I like the original fluff behind him. Um, there was a lot of, there was some material on him for a while until GW brought him back in um, 6th edition. And one of the things is, is during a White Wolf um, article when they updated his rules for, I think it was 3.5, it definitely wasn't 4th ed, I think it was 3.5 edition, um, they wrote up an interesting type of article for him, 
that basically described him as very much, I guess you could say, like a Robin Hoodish like character. He was a villain in the eyes of the government, and for the most part, what could be seen, uh, his actions could be seen as villainous. But to the common folk in the 40k universe, he was a hero. And I like that feel. It's like, okay, you know, you know, the imperial government is fair, fairly oppressive, so he, so he may do actions that um, would be warranted by the pup, by the governments and such as traitorous, villainous acts, while appearing to be um, heroic acts of mercy uh, for the common man. And I like that fluff about him because he was technically a villain. It's just that there were some small groups that didn't see it that way, and that I liked. But then in 6th edition, actually just prior to 6th edition, um, I'd say close around the 4th-ish, 5th era, um, one of the GW writers came out and said, I, like, I say that my favorite character is Cypher because he's the, he's the hero of the series. And from then, they kind of started playing him up as the hero. Like, if you look at his um, fluff, there is very little describing him as a villain. It's like, oh, he, he pretended to be an Inquisitor. Um, he, he, he was seen working with a bunch of Chaos Terminators. Yet, every time, despite this, there always is a positive twist to his actions. So... It's kind of like they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They want to give you one or two villain villainous acts that he did, but they try to throw in this positive twist into it just so to think that, oh, just because he did one thing that was terrible, it offsets the fact that there was this super positive thing out of it. Like a good example was is he caused an uprising on this planet that caused all the people to revolt against the government. But it was okay because it ended up the governor was corrupt anyway. So, yay! But it was bad that he did it because what if that government governor wasn't corrupt? It's like, that doesn't matter. That doesn't change the fact that you just basically went, he did something good, yet... Uh, but it was only seen villainous until it was further looked into. And he's also done good things for the Dark Angels, like, you know... There's talk, oh, you know, he's led them straight to Fallen. He brought back the Lion Sword. Um, the um, the Sword of Secrets and the Lion's Helm. It's like, uh, he's... Why do the Dark Angels consider him a Fallen again if he's done nothing but all this goody good stuff? So I don't like that. And I've had some people go, well, he's done. he's worked with Chaos Dudes. Yeah. What has he done with those Chaos Dudes that was evil? Did he slaughter a bunch of people? No. You know, it's always written that he's always written with his hands clean or washed of part of the sin that he's done of, or the crime that he's committed. And I don't like that. Um, but I consider him a villain myself because he's a fallen. And if you ask me, all fallen are traitors. Um, let's see, there was something else I was going to go off of with that. With him. Um... If it ends up like, I guess I, I guess what, I guess um, what you could say is, is if they want him to be a good guy, they should have just outright flat written him as a good guy that um, the Dark Angels refuse to believe is a good guy. Okay, that's fine. It's blatantly clear. But don't try this halfway business where it's like, is he or isn't he? Where well, clearly all the fluff says he is, but you won't say that he's a good guy, type of thing. You know. Say he's a good guy or say he's a villain. He can't be both. And especially the whole, oh, you know, he disguised himself as an Inquisitor. Okay, well, most people don't really give a crap about the Inquisition, except for, um... Well, can't really say that, because there's a lot of people who play the Inquisition, but it's like a thing, you know. A lot of times I feel like when an Inquisitor, di Qu Inquisitor dies, usually the, an the, usually the response is, and? So it's like, oh, and? What did he do as the Inquisitor that was so evil type of thing? And that's what I do... That's, like I'd say, so I feel that he is a villain, mainly because that's how the Dark Angels see him, and since I'm very Dark angel -y at heart when it comes to the um, fluff and the, guess for the lack of a better word, roleplay end of the hobby, 
So if you ask me, he is a fallen traitor. I will recognize that a lot of his fluff kind of points him as being the hero, but I will still consider him the villain until the fluff outright says he's a hero. Then I'll acknowledge him being a good guy and just say, well, as a Dark Angel player, though, be, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to their opinion of him. And so we're going to paint up these robes here. And my paint technique, I will admit, you're probably going to notice in a lot of these videos, I take a long time to paint. And the... Which and it's odd because usually the paint le the time that I take and it kind of shows like a difference here you know um with that I take an incredibly long time amount time to paint though my painting skills may not be considered um, very good which is which, which to be honest I have a very I don't think my paint skills are that great I'm not a big fan of them but. A lot of people at my hobby shop and a lot of people um, on YouTube seem to like my um, painting skills. So I guess you could consider it it's just like an, the artist part of me, never satisfied with my own work. Um, so no matter what happens, like if people say, you know, oh, that looks really good, you know, I'll you know, thank you, thank you know, I'll thank them and I'll take their word that it is really, really good. But to me, I'm never satisfied with my paint jobs, no matter how well they are. Um, but then again, like I said, I'm very overly critical. I'm, um, as the um, saying goes, you're your own worst critic. And that is definitely true. I am my worst critic. Because I just never give myself any credit. There are times where I'll be proud of a paint job like I do, that I do. Like, there's a couple of models in the Dornport videos that... I'm really proud of. I like how they came out, but I'll still not think that I'm that great. And do, 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 do. so let's go here. And so yes, these I do apologize again for these really super long videos of me just doing like, you know, painting this robe instead of just, um, um, cutting straight to the end, but I, we kind of feel like these would be great times for colorful commentary, our thoughts, and such, and so that's why we're going to be doing it in this style format, so, with that, and plus again, this way you can see exactly what we're doing. There's no tricks, there's no hiding, there's no, oh, just simply do this, and we kind of forget to mention the one part of the stage that's really super critical that we don't think to mention. So this way you see everything as we do it, when we do it, and how we're doing it. And speaking of uh, just random stuff, going to throw out some thoughts here on the advent calendar that um, GW is doing this year. Um, at the time of this video, which is during December, um, GW, has, this will be their second year doing the um, advent calendar. And, kind of, honest and for truly, I like it. And I'm at this, I have, the, I have the opinion of, even if nothing good comes on the advent calendar, like like um, the Dark Angels data slate and the Chaos one was all right. They weren't the greatest, but they, I do feel like they should have been incorporated with the um, box, with the expansion sets. I don't think they warranted um, a release on the advent calendar for $2.99. But I enjoy every day, you know, checking out the website and just seeing what came out, you know, even if nothing good comes from it, at least I get that one little, like, though, that oh boy moment to, to check out the website and see, sorry, what came out that week, and I like that part of it. It gives me, you know, I like just seeing, like, little surprises. It gives me a little nice surprise of the day, and I just enjoy that a lot, and this year, I noticed that the Dark Angels have another item coming up, 
and I'm really excited to see what that is because they have this because on the same day we're having we get a novel and usually that means well I can't really say much because it didn't happen this time around but usually that means character um, or at least that's what happened last year we got cypher and it was him and a release of um a cypher novel at the same time so I'm hoping that it's the same deal that we're gonna get a new character I would really love it if it's brother Bethor and he finally gets rules because he's he's pretty ballin in the fluff I just hope it doesn't it isn't like sergeant Naaman or because I hate when they give you like rules for playing characters that are officially dead you know, and that's most likely what it's going to be because that's a quick one. They could just go over and give him, because he was just a scout sergeant, so they could just easily just take the scout sergeant rules, slap it on him, and give him an extra like piece of war gear, give him his not dead yet special rule, as I like to call it, and just call it a day. So I'm hoping that's not it, or I hope it's some like new, new like data sheet, um, like maybe not in terms. Of, when I mean data sheet, I mean like, um, um, like a new piece of war gear or something like maybe like a series of plasma gun, plasma weapons that don't get hot that you have to pay a certain f fee and you can only have one of them in your army type of thing. Or, um, maybe an, a variant on one of our vehicles. Um, the only things that I would just really not want it to be is, um, a repackage of our altars of war or some extra echoes of war because I think that would be kind of lame and not naming um, I would want it to be something new something that doesn't ner something that either didn't have rules originally or if they had rules their fluff doesn't say they're dead which is why I would prefer like maybe brother Beth whore which don't know what you would give them in terms of special rules but um, but, um, I feel, but I feel like, you know, he would have real, he could have some really cool special rule, like maybe feel no pain or something because of his rulings of how he went through a whole gene stealer cult to get the, um, one of the sacred standards back or something like that. But all I'm just hoping for is not just some lame, like altar of war type thing. So, like, even though I'll still buy that because I like Altars of War, um, I would just like something new and fresh from GW for the Dark Angels. But chances are it's going to be, you know, just like a rehash of something. Or they may give us, you know, special character rules for um, the, the Dark Vengeance kit. But we'll see. And go stop for a moment because he may be coming in. Sorry about that. Um, had to um, take care of something real quick, so let's get back. So, almost done with these robes. Just got to paint his hood. And then we can move on to the next step. Oh, forgot to start my watch again. And then once I get done with this step, can put him on a base, and I'll make it easier for the rest of the paint job. But for now, keeping him off the base. And I still have to think of what I'm going to base his, mo his base stand on. Because I want him to stand alone, but I don't know what I want it to be yet.
Nikt. Again, sorry that I keep blocking the view. just a little bit more and then we'll be ready for the next step. Get as much out of this little paint on my palette as possible. Again, I apologize for any off camera or blocking effect that I'm doing. It's I'm slowly figuring out better ways to um paint these models and record it, so I'm doing my best. Um, like I said, hopefully as the series goes on, I will improve upon my camera angle and my presentation in that area. Okay, so there. And alrighty. Just got a little bit of paint on that one spot. That's not too terrible. Just got to alter that a little bit. And give me one second here. Yep. Sorry. And there we go. So, now that that's done, I'm gonna paint up the, um, okay, now I'm gonna just take a quick peek. Let's see, I'm gonna put him on his base. That way he can stand a little better. Alright, he. And then we're just gonna give that a quick moment to dry, and then we will um, continue on with the um, project. Okay, we are back, and we are now going to glue Cypher to his base. So just gonna take a little bit. I use Zapagap. Um, I find it works great on both plastic and um, pewter and fine cast without any issues. It's basically just a hobby purpose um, super glue. Um, it works great for what I need it for. There is a product called Zap Kipper, Kicker that um, makes it dry quicker. I don't use it because I don't like um, how brittle it makes the, um, the bond with it. And so we're just going to be... So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to wait for this to dry 
and we will end the video right here for now. So, thank you all for watching, and until next time, Fearless Gamers, this is Matt the Vet saying, take care. Thank you.